everybody. Laura Tremendous here. Got another battle report here for you. Sorry it took so long to get this one out. Last week was busy at work, and then with the holidays and everything like that, I just, I wasn't very tremendous last week. I, I ate a lot of turkey. I ate a lot of everything. <laughs> I may have added another chin to my collection. But you know what? It was a damn good week, and I just didn't get to the battle reports. This isn't anything. Uh, I did get some games, and I have a backlog now. It's just, I'm sorry. But here it is. Fi battle Report 51, 5,000-point game. Tis I, Lord Tremendous of the Ogre Cons, versus the Twisted Son. He returns of the Warriors of the Dark Gods. Now, he's been out of practice. He's been out of town for a while. He's, uh... Well, screw it. I'm just going to tell you. He joined the army. And uh, he just got back. And he was visiting before he goes to his next base. And, uh, or his, his, his first base. Whatever you want to call it. And we got a game in real quick. So sit back, relax, and get ready to see how this one goes. Here's my list, and there has been some changes, uh, mainly because I wanted to get back to playing what I wanted to play as opposed to what I thought I should play, I guess is the best way to describe it. I was on uh, Warhammer Weekly with Vince and Shyhammer and everything like that, and Tom, and uh, I, I wanted to play the Rock Rock, and I'm going to name the Rock Rock after Shyhammer, so i got to start getting used to playing it. So I had to make some adjustments. One of the adjustments is my Khan, Maximus, is now he's just a Khan. He's my general, he's got the Hardened Shield, Talisman of Greater Shielding, Charm of Cursed Iron, and Horde Master. He's got the Charm of Cursed Iron because I, I, that's, I put him in my big unit of 12 tribesmen, and that 5-up ward save against War Machines is huge. Uh, or artillery weapons, anyway. Horde Master, it makes it so that I can give him a 2-up armor save, and he's got a 5-up ward. This guy's job is really just protect the big unit of tribesmen, give him some strength 5, and... You know, maybe even soak up some damage with his two-up armor save. That was really it. Plus, he's hundreds of points cheaper than the Dragon. So, it is I what it is. Are you not entertained? Is this not why you are here? Next up, I have my Shaman Skaz. Skaven and AZ. I gave him an Iron Fist. I found the points. Threw some Iron Fist on him. I want to give him a great weapon. Iron Fist will have to do. Uh, he's still got three spells more than... So for a total of four, the, the Demonic Heart, and he uses Shamanism. I, the only thing I've added to him is an Iron Fist, and I feel that he's worthy of some fisting. Next up, I have my Khan. Khan! He's still my BSB, and his kit, I think, is pretty much exactly the way it was before. He's got the Axe Breaker Gauntlets, he's got the Dragon Mantle, Talisman of Shielding, and Spine Splitter. Gives him a 2-up, 6-up, parry, and he destroys magic weapons if he hits you. He's pretty badass. And then, of course, one of my favorite characters, my Mammoth Hunter, Lord Tremendous. He's got his Ogre Crossbow, the Razor Blade, the Armor of Fortune, the Arox Charm, Headhunter, and he's on his trusty Tusker, the War Teddy. You don't mess with perfection, and that's what he is. Even when he fails, he wins. Th that's what I tell myself. I don't know. For my core choices, I still have my big-ass unit of 12 tribesmen, the good old boys, with full command, iron fist, and the banner of discipline. I just like this rolling block of meat. <laughs> They're just fun to play with. Then I have a unit of five tribesmen, uh, Skaz's Spazzes, with Iron Fist and a banner. And uh, they're just a unit for Skaz to kill with miscasts. And he sometimes does. My special choices have increased slightly. Uh, I start off with my Sabertooth Tiger Bow Wowzer, and then I have another Sabertooth Tiger because I'm starting to understand that I need more chaff in this army. Then I have a unit of five Scrappling Trappers, the favored pets. And then I have a second unit of five Scrappling Trappers. They haven't been named yet, because I don't know if I'm keeping them or not. It's just, you know, I, I like the Trappers a lot. I like having the chaff. I like having the redirectors. And it made sense. You know, you guys have been pushing me to do it for a while, and uh, so I'm going to do it. You win. Stop beating me up. I, of course, still have my unit of five mercenary veterans, the Corpulent Bastards. Uh, they've got a Banner, Musician, Iron Fist, Lethal Strike, Bodyguard, and the War Standard. And uh, I just like this kit. I love the unit, and so far, so good. For my single powder keg choice, I have a Thunder Cannon of Doom! And then for my chain beasts, I start off with my Rocker Rock Elf Eater and the Rider Shyhammer. Uh, Shyhammer, of course, is armed with a lance because the man knows how to spear things. 
yeah, that came out wrong. I apologize. But, uh, yeah, this is uh, obviously just some concept art. I'm getting the Omens model from Mirrors Miniatures. I plan on putting a big muscle-bound orc on him. I'm going to give both of them wife beater t-shirts, and it's going to be just magnificent. Ambulances will be involved. And then, of course, I have my Frost Mammoth, Rufus! Not to be overshadowed by Elf Eater at all, or Shyhammer, uh, Rufus is just still my favorite monster on the table. Uh, the guys that he tows around has a couple of uh, ogre crossbows just for flavor, but he's really the beast of the hour. I love Rufus. Well, that's it for my list. I'm going to go ahead and post my opponent's list, play some music, feel free to pause it whenever you want to see what he took. Here my spells, which are exactly what you're looking at. Of course, Chilling Howl is on Rufus. And here's deployment. And no, I did not place first. Are you ready for a war? My opponent threw all of his stuff down, and from left to right, I believe he's got some uh, Wasteland Knights, some dogs, a uh, unit of Wrath-marked warriors with hand weapon shield, another unit of dogs, uh, some Crusher Knights, some Forsaken in the middle there. Behind them is a Chimera, and next to them is a huge unit of Chosen. Uh, I believe he's got a character in there too. And there's another unit of dogs that have vanguarded that are hidden by that big tower on the right. Uh, for my part, I just tried to match him. I knew it was going to end up in the middle somehow. Uh, so I threw my trappers in that little bitty forest in the middle there. Another unit of trappers on the left behind that ruined house. We decided to call it kind of like a building so it was impassable. You couldn't go in it because it's just impossible to get your models in there. Uh, the idea with the trappers were to try to kill the dogs and then bait the knights. Keep the knights out of the fight for as long as possible. Uh, my cannon, Rufus, and the tribesmen were going to try to deal with the crushers and or the uh, wasteland warriors the best they could. I'll be honest with you, the Forsaken, I could give a crap about. There was just too few of them for really for me to be worried about. The hope was to send Bow Wowser up the middle to crash the crusher knights into the impassable terrain and make them stay there so I could get a uh, what's it called? A beneficial counter charge. That was that was the hope. Uh, I've got Skaz and his spazzes in the back there. Right in front of them are the corpulent bastards with my con. Their job was to deal with the chosen with uh, Elf Eater and Shyhammer. Uh, I've got my other saber tooth tiger in the middle there to help bait and keep things away if possible. And Lord Tremendous was hopefully going to deal with the dogs that you can't see behind the tower. And then targets of opportunity. That was going to be his job. Uh, in a, oh, I'm sorry, those aren't uh, for, uh, what's it called? Forsaken Middle, those are Chaos Trolls, I'm, or whatever they are now. Uh, my bad. I, uh, <laughs> they're Trolls. So yeah, I was kind of hoping to get the Merc Vets into the Chaos Trolls because Lethal Strike on the 6 will negate their regen, and you know, free wounds are free wounds. Plus with their low leadership, he does have his general in there with the Chosen, so their leadership isn't all that low, but you know, if he's rolling it, he's rolling it. Uh, but yeah, that was really it for deployment. So we go over here to top of turn one after movement, and yeah, I mean, there's no subtlety in this army. They're charging forward as fast as they can, and pretty much everything does across the board. I don't think anything holds back except for the Chimera and the Chosen. 
Uh, like I said, my opponent's out of practice. I don't think he remembered everything, but at the same time, he knew he wasn't playing with a pinkies up army. Uh, so he came at me like it, and needless to say, I'm, I'm a little... Well, I'm on the back foot because now I have to react to him, but at the same time, he's playing my game, which is close combat, and I'm looking forward to seeing how it goes. Uh, he took no wizards and he had no shooting because it's a Wasteland Warriors army, Warrior to Dark Eyes army. And uh, so we go over here to bottom of one. And uh, I don't move a whole lot. There was really no good charges for me to make. Uh, so I made the sacrifice play. Bow Wowser goes up to bait the Crusher Knights. I want them to not be able to overrun into my army, but I want to be able to charge him with my army. Especially that unit. That unit is terrifying. And to be honest, I didn't know if they had lances or not. I could have asked, but I kind of like the surprise. Uh, my trappers stayed in the forest so they could be stubborn against his little Forsaken group that's uh, pushing him in the middle there. I figured if he traffic jams up that area, it's well worth the 80-point trappers. My other unit of trappers move up to throw some stuff at his knights. Again, if his knights go after my trappers, that is 80 points well spent. And I believe Lord Tremendous charge into the dogs, who you can't see because of the stupid tower. That's it for movement, though. There was no reason for me to move the rest of my stuff. I'm going to let him get a little closer. There's been a picture of Lord Tremendous slamming into the dogs, and uh, again, that's just to clear out some chaff. I plan on, if I beat them, overrunning, and I know I'll be off the table, but at least the Chosen won't countercharge me. And uh, I see that as a win. During the magic phase, just I was trying to pull out his Dispel Dice, and he didn't fall for it. I cast Swarm of Insects on his Crusher Knights and actually got a wound through, if you can believe it. So... Awesome! <laughs> and then what I really wanted to get off was Break the Spirit. And since he doesn't have a cast or anything like that, he doesn't get plus one towards it, which isn't huge, but it made all the difference in this one. And uh, the spell goes off, so now they're negative one to hit, and all terrain is dangerous terrain too, which is huge. So hopefully I can drop one of these guys without having to swing a sword at him. During the shooting phase, nothing really significant happens other than my cannon shooting at his warriors. Really, it was the only target I had. Yeah, I could have shot at the knights, but they had a five-up ward. I was only going to do a handful of wounds. I wanted to shoot at the guys, and I also didn't want him to take that guy off on the right because then he'd get overrun, possibly getting the white tribesmen. Ugly, ugly, ugly. So I took a pot shot at his warriors, and I think I ended up killing two or three, which, you know, it's got to start somewhere. My trappers did pretty well, too. They killed two of the little Forsaken guys, which uh, I, I felt really good about, considering. So that was something. At least they're not going to die in vain. And then we go into combat, and Lord Tremendous has no problem killing all the dogs. Uh, yeah, I, they didn't even get a chance to attack. They just got myrtilated. I overrun just like I said I would, and that's where I went off the table. I'll be back. So we go over here to top of two after movement, and again, there's not a ton. His Forsaken guys do go into the trappers in the trees who stand and shoot, and that nothing happens. They get in there no problem. They don't fail any dangerous terrains. They're just super dangerous. Uh, his knights back up away from the trappers because he's starting to see my trap, uh, and the rest of his stuff just kind of postures. His crusher knights don't take the bait with Bow Wowser. The chosen kind of back up slightly because they, I think, we're going after tremendous, and his trolls move up a little bit. That's really it for movement. There's been a picture of my trappers about to get beat to death by the surviving Chosen. Actually, you know, I think one more did die. I'm not sure if it was to stand and shoot or the uh, forest, but two are in there, and honestly, one would have been enough. Oh, I'm sorry. And the other unit of the dogs charge into uh, my trappers on the left side that were trying to bait the knights, and they make it no problem. I did stand to shoot at these guys as well and did nothing. These trappers need to get back on the range for some practice before my next game, I think. This being a true to four, more as a doc, dark god's army, there's no magic, no shooting. We go straight into combat. And uh, these guys beat, they only killed two of my trappers. I'm stubborn six in the forest, so, you know, I have a chance. I don't do anything to them. Don't even ask. And uh, I roll and actually make my break check. So, yeah, the trappers hold them uh, right there in the forest, which is not what I expected to have happen. But, you know what? It's a speed bump now it's a traffic jam so that's actually really awesome and once again trappers are better than everyone else over here the trappers fare pretty much the same uh three of them die this time but they're able to take a dog out in return uh they are not stubborn here and charge and three wounds to one wound i lose by three and uh yeah the poor bastards they break they get run down and the dogs do go off the table but they'll be back and 
you know, it wasn't the unit I wanted to redirect, but it'll do, I guess. It'll have to. So here we are in bottom of two after movement, and there has been some. I charged the trolls with both my Merc Vets and my uh, Rocker Rock, the Elf Eater, and only the Rocker Rock made it. The, the Merc Vets didn't even come close. I rolled like a two with them or something. It was really bad. Uh, so that kind of sucked. I realize that I'm out of chaff for the most part. My trappers are dead uh, on the left flank. The ones in the middle are not going to last much longer. And uh, all I've got is Bow Wowser who's begging those crushers to kill him. And I've got the other dog that's going to try to redirect the uh, Chosen because I don't want to die. So I decide to start moving. Uh, the Rock Rock makes it into the Trolls. Probably not my best choice in the world, but uh, what can you do? you got to take what you can get. I move the tribesmen, the, the corp, or I'm sorry, the uh, good old boys up. I move Rufus up to support. I re or I retarget my uh, cannon to go after the knights, and uh, that's that's really it. Skaz comes up with his spazzes, and Lord Tremendous comes back up on the table and positions himself to either charge a chimera who's hiding behind the tower right now, or uh, the chosen, depending on who gives him a better charge next turn. That's it for movement. There's a better picture of Corpulent Bastards failing a charge and Elf Eater making it. Probably because Shyhammer was screaming at him to make it. <laughs> hey, when all else fails, turn up the volume. Nothing happens in magic or shooting at all. It just fails across the board. I think I rolled like Snake Eyes for magic and he stopped it because he channeled and my shooting just missed or is dead or in combat. So we go into combat, and my Rocket Rock does incredibly well, actually. Uh, my opponent just does much better with his regen saves. Uh, that all being said, one troll does die. Uh, so charge and three wounds, he does a wound to me. I win by three, he needed like a six, I think, to stay, and made it no problem. Which means my Rocket Rock is kind of out there with his ass in the air. The Merc Vets were supposed to make it, they didn't, but uh, we'll see what happens. I gotta learn how to use this guy one way or the other, and I like having the just white-hot psychopath on the table, so I'm enjoying this. So, quickly, we go over here to top of three after movement, and there's a little bit. I think my opponent's patience finally ran out, and he saw some really good opportunities. Uh, his Chimera charges my dog, who fails his terror check and flees. Uh, he redirects and makes it into my Rock Rock, into Elf Eater, which sucks. I mean, I don't know exactly what's going to happen, but that's a lot of regen, and the Rock Rock just doesn't have the saves. So, we'll see what happens here. I'm, I'm hoping. Uh, his crushers have enough and go after Bow Wowser, who stays like a champion, and they get in there. And that's fine. Even if he overruns, he's going to hit that uh, impassable terrain and uh, stop. And then I should be able to counter charge with both Rufus, who might even get a flank, and uh, my uh, good old boys, which, even if they hit the front, is going to be magnificent. Uh, his chosen move to get a better angle on Lord Tremendous, which is perfect. It puts him out of position. And uh, his warriors just kind of angle in the best they can. Like I said, that traffic jam in the forest is really gumming up the works there. Uh, his dogs come back on the table, but he just leaves them there, and the knights move up towards the cannon that's uh, gotten their attention, which means my cannon's probably dead soon. But uh, that's it for movement. There's a better picture of my Sabertooth Tiger fleeing and my Rock Rock getting uh, hit in the flank by his Chimera. That's gonna hurt. And there's a better picture of his uh, Crusher slamming into Bow Wowser, and that's gonna hurt for him. With my opponent having no magic and no shooting, we go straight into combat, and this time his Forsaken have no problem ripping the heads off of all three of my trappers, leaving their bodies to fertilize the forest, and it's sad. Over here, the Crushers, who have been held at bay by the scary, snarling Sabertooth Tiger, decide that he's all bark, no bite, and they were right! <laughs> <laughs> they eviscerate him from jaw to tail and leave his body there to fertilize the ground. And that's also sad. Over here, though, this is where it hurts the most. My Rocker Rock, I think he was able to do a couple of wounds at a Chimera. I threw all of uh, Shyhammer's attacks into the Trolls, and he wounded twice, believe it or not, at Strength 4, uh, but he regen both of those. And then the Rocker Rock uh, got his attacks, I think, 
think he got his attacks, or maybe he went Simon with the Chimera, I can't remember. But, uh, no, he must have gotten his, ta his attacks, because uh, he got two through, but he did, like, five wounds. He just made a lot of his saves, and in return, the trolls and the Chimera were able to beat him to death. Wasn't even a combat res thing, they just straight up killed him. And that's exactly what should have happened, and that's my fault for failing to charge with the Corpulent Bastards, but damn, that was a fun fight. <laughs> I like the rock rock combat over. He just reforms his units like this. And that brings us to bottom of three after movement. Well, there's a lot of angry counter charges, just like I had hoped. Rufus and the Corpulent Bast- or I'm sorry, and the good old boy slam into the Crushers, which is outstanding. I still don't think this is going to be an easy fight. They got a high armor. I think they even have a ward save. So beating those guys to death is not going to be an easy task. But if I can kill one, Rufus can overrun into the Warriors if he removes the right one. Uh, depends you know it depends how many I kill if I can kill two then it's guaranteed Rufus overruns into the warriors and hopefully can kill them off uh, the Merc Vat slam into the Chimera that's mostly out of vengeance uh, Skaz and Spazes move up to start throwing some hate at the trolls because just in case that Chimera is still there next turn and I get trolls in the flank I want the trolls to be as weak as possible or maybe even the corpulent bastards to have a few augments on them uh, Lord Tremendous moves to put pressure on the Chosen. I'm honestly just trying to keep them out of position. Uh, if he keeps turning the face Tremendous, I'll spin him like a pinwheel the entire game and keep all our points out of the game, and that's fine with me. Uh, the cannon stays put right where he's at because I don't think the Knights can make that charge. I hope they can't make that charge. And I want another shot at him before I start fleeing my uh, cannon behind the hill. And uh, that's, that's pretty much it for movement. Oh yeah, my dog does rally on his own leadership. I I felt really good about that. Here's a bird's eye view of the Corpulent Bastard slamming into the Chimera, my one remaining Sabretooth uh, rallying, and the good old boys with Rufus slamming into the Crushers. This is going to be a good combat phase, I, I think. <laughs> During the magic phase, I believe it gets Swarm of Insects off again on these trolls, and I'm rolling out of the box! And if you can believe it, a troll dies because of it. Insanity. I know, I know, I was very pleased. But yeah, another one bites it, and uh, I'm feeling good about that. Go Skaz, huh? He might even survive this game. Probably not, but maybe. Shooting does nothing, the cannon misses horrendously. So we go into combat, and yes, the mercenary veterans destroy the Chimera. It only had two more wounds left, I think they only have four now, four or five. Uh, but they did a ton, two of which were lethal strikes, so it had no regen, no armor, I don't believe it gets a ward. So yeah, they were able to decimate and destroy it, which I felt really good about. And it's always good to avenge, you know, the L feeder, I feel good about that. After the combat, the uh, Merc Vets reposition like this to either go after the Chosen or possibly the Trolls, depending on what happens next turn. So we go into the big combat here, and it goes stupid well for me. Uh, three of his crushers get destroyed. I do eight, well, eight wounds get through. I just, my opponent's dice had just had enough. Uh, in return, he's only able to do two wounds to me. That's it across the board. I, I win by a landslide. It's really unfortunate because that unit is capable of so much more. He just rolled poorly. And uh, he, I believe, auto breaks. And we chase with both units. Well, with the tribesmen anyway. The Rufus really couldn't pursue because he was out of combat. And yeah, we run him down no problem. I believe my tribesmen go between 10 and 12 inches. Rufus does about the same. Rufus is able to slam into the uh, Wasteland Warriors. The tribesmen just get a free turn to reform next time. Well, I guess not a free turn, but you know what I mean. They'll have to reform and find a new fight uh, before this game ends. But that was huge, getting that unit out. Uh, taking that unit out the way I did, uh, especially for what it cost me, two wounds on a tribesman. I got stupid lucky there. That unit is capable of just decimating anything it runs into. But it's a dice game, and I got lucky that uh, his dice didn't want to play. So I'll take it. I'll take it. So we come over here to top of four after movement, and there's not a ton really. Uh, his trolls go into the Merc Vets, his Chosen march forward to get out of the charge arc of my Mercenary Vets, and that's it really. Uh, his knights, I think, attempt to charge my cannon and fail. I think his dogs run up uh, in order to threaten the cannon a little bit, and and that's it. Oh no, his uh, Forsaken and the Forest charge Rufus in the flank, and uh, that's it for movement. 
there's a better picture of his troll slamming into my merc vets, and uh, I'm fine with that because with Lethal Strike, I think I've got him. And there's a better picture of his Forsaken slamming into the flank of Rufus, and I get why he did that. If I forget about him or I don't direct attacks at him, uh, he'll have a flank and a charge, which would definitely help with combat res. We dive straight into combat, and Rufus does his thing. I believe five guys die. Uh, he does still have a Forsaken in my flank. I, I did throw some attacks at him, I just couldn't kill the second guy, because it's a dice game. And, uh, yeah, but charge and five wounds to, uh, he did a wound to me. He's got a rank and a banner. Charge flank. I win by one, and if I'm not mistaken, both units make their break check and stick it out. We go into combat over here, and I kid you not, I roll no less than four lethal strikes. Uh, six is to wound, and it was just insane. So, yeah, I, I did a bunch of wounds to these guys before they even had a chance to attack because their initiative is low. And with Iron Fist, my unit's initiative is pretty high, especially for ogres. So, yeah, I destroy the unit before they can do anything. And then I reform to face the Chosen because, hey, they've got the taste of blood on their on their lips, on their, on their smackers, and they want more in the form of uh, Chosen. So I'm going to give it to them. <laughs> Should be interesting, the Chosen Brick is still dangerous as hell. So we go over here to bottom of four after movement, and really, uh, Lord Tremendous and the Corpulent Bastards charge into the Chosen. Uh, the good old boys turn to face the uh, Wasteland Warriors that are in combat with Rufus. Uh, Skaz and Spazes turn to face the Knights. Uh, my remaining Sabertooth Tiger runs over to try to get in the way of the Knights, and my cannon falls over on the edge there. He's still on the hill, he can still be charged, but uh, he's trying to get out of line of sight so that the Knights don't eviscerate him. <laughs> Other than that, uh, uh, there is no other movement. There's a better picture of my Corpulent Bastards, my BSB, and Lord Tremendous slamming into the Chosen. And uh, I don't know how this is going to go. Uh, like I said, I've, I've underestimated Chosen before and bounced off of them uh, with the couple of survivors. So I'm curious to see what's going to happen here. During the magic phase, I get Break the Spirit off on the Knights, and same as the Crushers, uh, this isn't really to do anything but deter him from charging or marching, and if he does either, he'll be taking DT2 che checks for everything. And if he does get into combat, at least he's negative one to hit. It's just the best spell in the world to use against a unit like this. During the shooting phase, my cannon fires at the Knights. Even after moving and long range, I hit with a six. <laughs> and then uh, I only wound once, though, and kill a guy. So I felt good about that. You know, better one than none. Then we jump into combat. And again, it's insane how well my Merc Vets do. And Lord Tremendous. Uh, as you can see, all but like six, five or six of the Chosen. What is that? One, two, three, four. It looks like five of the Chosen are dead. One of which is his general, who couldn't make way because he wasn't in the front, which really pissed him off, and I totally get that. Uh, in return, Lord Tremendous took a couple of wounds, uh, the Corpulent Bastards took a couple of wounds, and that was it. That unit auto-breaks, unfortunately, for my opponent, and that's it. That's the end of the game. My opponent looks at the table and goes, nah, you've got this. It's over. So we called it. Uh, he seated the game right here, and that's what the board looks like at the end of the game. Uh, like I've said, I don't know uh, how many times you've seen my reports or anything like this, but when you uh, give up, when you surrender the game, it's like all your units just spontaneously combust and die, and so you get full points. So It was a victory, and uh, I feel pretty good about that. I feel bad my opponent's dice really turned on him. He's really out of practice. I did ask him at the beginning of the game if he just wanted to have you know a fun game, a training game, you know, get back into the swing of things, and he kind of looked at me and shrugged. It's, he was just like, no, come at me, bro. So... I broed him. I, again, that doesn't sound right. I apologize. <laughs> but, uh, you know what? We'll get into the recap, because right now, this game is over. That's it, man. Game over, man. It's game over. So as you could surmise, this was a victory for Lord Tremendous. Uh, my opponent surrendered at the top of turn five. I ended up losing Bow Wowser, all of my Scrappling Trappers, and Elf Eater, who was ridden by Shyhammer. Although, that wasn't their fault. They really, well, no, I mean, it sucked, but... I got outplayed there, and uh, they did do a lot of damage. Unfortunately, they did a lot of damage to regenerating units uh, who regenerated, and still did really well. So I'm pleased with what I had to lose in order to win this game, if that makes sense.
Like I've already said, Elf Eater and Shyhammer did really well for this game. Uh, they got unlucky with the trolls. I was really hoping that the trolls weren't going to make their break check, especially when they lost by three. Six isn't the easiest thing in the world to roll, but he did it, and what can you do? Uh, we'll see. We'll see. I plan on keeping him in the list. I'm enjoying using him, and I'm looking forward to the conversion and everything, so this should be fun. Rufus taking on the warriors of the uh, the Wasteland Warriors all by himself and winning was awesome, especially considering you get countercharged by, granted, just a couple of infantry, but it was still really cool. I love Rufus, and it's situations like this that make him so great. Uh, Lute oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> Lord Tremendous and the Merc slamming into the Chosen worked. Couldn't believe it. Well, I guess I, I shouldn't say it like that. I could believe it had a chance to work, but I have seen myself bounce off the Chosen before. So I was happy to see it go my way. And uh, the Chaff, I think, alone is what won me the game. Kept his Knights and unit of Dogs basically out of the entire game. Gave me the Crushers. And in the end, I had one last Dog that I could have redirected the Knights with again had I needed to. So yes, Chaff definitely helps a lot. And uh, I'm glad I have more now. At least in my 5,000 point list. Like I said, my opponent is way out of practice. Uh, he admitted as much before we started playing the game, but he wanted a real game, so we, we gave him one. Uh, Big Daddy uh, needs to get some vengeance for the Twisted Son. I am calling him out. It might be January when I finally run into him, because, you know, schedules and holidays and everything, but damn it, he needs to, he needs to avenge his son. I'm calling you out, Big Daddy. Do something. Uh, Warriors of Dark Gods, that army alone just scares the hell out of me when I see them across the table. I have to treat them like a bomb, because if I don't, they're going to blow my head off. Yeah, that came out right. This was an absolutely great game, though, against a great opponent, just a rusty opponent. But I, I really do enjoy playing against this guy. He's a lot of fun. And uh, I wish I could get a rematch against him, but he is moved away. And I don't know when I'll see him again. So whenever he's ready to get some vengeance, uh, I'll always have a table waiting for him. Uh, I do enjoy playing against this guy. And, you know, I think maybe he moved away also because he was afraid of my awesome. I guess he'll have to come back and prove that he's not. But seriously, bud, next time you're in town, let me know. We'll definitely have to get a game in. So hey guys, I want to throw this out there uh, for all of my Kingdom of Ecotain, even the Empire of Sonstal guys, or anybody who just likes, you know, the, uh, the, the Excalibur type friggin' uh, models and stuff. Uh, Tabletop Miniature Solutions is doing another Indiegogo. It is in my description, the link and everything. Copy, paste, and enjoy. Uh, but they're having an Indiegogo up to start making uh, Kingdom of Echo Train models, and they've got some insanely cool looking concept art on here uh, available. They've already fully funded, now they're just unlocking uh, bonuses and stuff like that. Peg Knights, other knights, I mean just the more, the more people, you know, spend on the on the project the more that's going to get unlocked and the more models you'll get so <laughs> if you're looking for this kind of stuff these models are worth looking at and getting uh you're going to get your models no matter how much you pledge no matter what you go for you're going to get them that part is guaranteed that's going to happen uh as of this recording it has uh 12 days left so you've got a little over a week to get your uh just under two weeks actually to get your bids in so if you have to wait for a payday or sell a kidney or something like that do it because if you're looking to start a KOE army or even put some knights in an empire army or whatever you want them for this is your chance to get them at great prices, high quality models from a company that's been supporting the Ninth Age since the beginning. So don't wait, get going, go to the site and at the very minimum check it out, tell your friends about it, whatever you gotta do. These are some badass models, this is a great opportunity. KOE has been looking for new models forever, here's your wish, granted, get in on it while you still can. Tell them Tremendous sent you. Hope you guys enjoy it. And of course, I would be remiss if I did not take a moment to thank everybody who supports me financially uh, through Patreon, PayPal, and other means. I have a, a, a decent amount of donors I'm very pleased with. Uh, I'm not allowed to thank all of them. Some of them wish to remain anonymous, and I respect that. Uh, however, these are the individuals that allow me to thank them properly. Alex of the Vale Renegades, South Florida's Gamer Mancy team, 
Daniel Jolson and Caillou Choi. Thank you guys so much. I really do appreciate it. And all my donors and all everybody that watches, I really do appreciate everybody. And I hope I continue to be worthy of your viewership and your donations. Thanks, guys. But that's going to do it for this one, guys. Battle Report number 51 is officially in the history books. Please, if you're interested at all or you know anyone that's interested at all in getting some KOE models, please send them to the TMS uh, website, the Indiegogo campaign. Hook them up because this is going to happen. And if they can get the models at a cheaper price than retail after the fact, not only are you doing them a favor, but now you got a better opponent to play against. With models, they owe you. So, yeah, I mean, it's the holidays. Come on. This is your chance. <laughs> Uh, as always, though, guys, uh, if you have any questions, comments, concerns, or complaints, feel free to put them in the comment section below, and I will get back to you as quick as I can. But as always, guys, thanks. <laughs>